All right. All right. I'm ready now. We're ready to start. This I'm is ready. this <laughs> is Theo Tosidis and this is Project Member Spotlight. And we have with us two fabulous Division 22 <laughs> members. Uh, we have Dr. <laughs> Teresa Ashman and Dr. Kim Gorgans, our superstars for today. <laughs> and uh, and let's get to know each other. Uh, so why don't you guys tell us a little bit about, I guess, yourselves or each other. I don't know how you want to do it. And uh, then I have a few questions for you. <laughs> we should do that. Okay. It's like a pretty style where it's like we're talking to each other. Oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to cover that. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's my... Oh, yeah. There's my other job. <laughs> so I'm going to say something about Teresa. Uh, because she's too humble to say this herself, but Teresa Ashman is a rehab goddess. So rehab and neuropsych goddess. So Teresa, if you were to Google her and get your arms around the vast measure of her scholarship, I mean, it's incomprehensible that she's not a hundred years old, A, and B, that she's so gracious and generous with her time and talent. She's a mentor to like a thousand young trainees. So all you have to do is follow her around any conference and you could see a trail of ducklings behind. And then that she is one of my very best girlfriends is just says everything about she's the kind of person that you want to spend <laughs> your entire life with. So uh, I think Teresa is the feather in the cap of all of Division 22. Awesome. And we're very happy to have her here. Now, try to top that, Teresa. <laughs> wow. Thanks for the challenge here, Kim. So, um, as you can tell from Kim's exuberant like, description of me, that says an awful lot about who Kim is. I think of Kim as my personal cheerleader of life. So, she is constantly a person who... Um, not only is supportive of me and anyone else who's lucky enough to call her a good friend, um, but she's just, you know, tirelessly supporter of everyone within the division, which I would imagine that her name will be a surprise to no one who watches this video because she's been our council rep for a long time now. Um, I imagine that we'll keep her in the, gov the, the higher governance for Division 22 for a long time too, because she's exceptional at that. Um, she's just uh, all around wonderful person in that regard. And she's completely committed to rehab psych. I mean, she works at the University of Denver and has started all kinds of programs there and been pushing for rehab psych to be part of general psych curriculum as well. Yeah, look at her face now. You've done all these great things. <laughs> Yes. And you it's amazing. So much more content than I did. <laughs> now I should say that Lisa has head up training institutes really everywhere where training has been identified to be of any quality. So Sinai, Rusk, Shepherd Center, everything has an Ashman stamp on it. Okay, I feel so humbled now. Okay, uh, so this isn't a competition of who's yeah. the nicest uh, towards the other. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we are great friends, and we also are are really big supporters of rehab psych as as a profession in and of itself, and that's partly why we're doing this together. That's uh, right. Because we want to show both sides of that. Right. Yep. And, and because you have been <clears throat> both are stellar in your professional lives, we wanted to learn a little bit more about you know uh, things about your own your personal lives, how you think. Uh, what do you have to tell us? What what do you have to tell uh, the rest of the uh, Division 22 community as uh, some things that they could be helpful for them? So I want to start by asking you a question. My first question is, what event in your life shaped the most of who you are now? And uh, I'm going to start with you, Teresa. <laughs> so... Um... You know, to all, all fair, one also Theo is one of my good close friends, and so I'm I'm happy to be doing this, and I think this is a pretty cool idea. Um, I, so we did get, which I imagine anybody else that does this would get the questions beforehand. So I did have a little bit of time to ponder on them, but um, I mean, I have to say, and you know, this is not to bring all of the fun down, but uh, the most, you know, 
the, the event that that influenced my life the most was the death of my mother when I was ten, and um, that you know certainly I think led to a path of of um, wanting to go into psychology. Initially, I was actually going to go to med school, but then when I really understood because we didn't have psychology in high school like most kids do now. Um, once I really understood what it was, I knew that was sort of the path to go in. And, and you know, with a focus really of wanting to figure out how to help people get over major adverse life events. So there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Kim, how about you? Yeah. Dang. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think, so the real answer would be that, uh, I feel really strongly that all of psychology is rehab psych. I think uh, conceptualizing disability as an identity status really should be embedded in all of psychology and thinking about adjustment to uh, illness, acute and chronic adjustment to disability. Those things should be sensibilities that every psychologist has. And obviously, like Teresa said, I feel really strongly that that be embedded in every doctoral level curriculum and all the way down to high school, frankly. Uh, so I came to that, I think, because I held that sensibility. And uh, my mom had a hearing impairment, which anyone who knows me and knows how loud a talker I am <laughs> will not be surprised by. And uh, my dad had polio as a kid, so he had post-polio syndrome. He uh, died from complications of that just about a year ago, like to the day almost. And uh, it was just always part of the world, right? It was like, you know, uh, finding the accessible parking space in the restaurants that my dad could go and eat at and, uh, you know, making sure that the uh, a waiter faced my mom when he was telling her special so that she could understand what he's saying like it's just part of what you do and uh and so i came to rehab psych really because i found my people like it occurred to me at somewhere along the way that uh not everybody has that same uh kind of set of mental conventions in the way that they approach their work and uh and rehab psych really these are my people and uh I would love to see that same set of conventions be broadened to apply to everyone across the board. So um, I, my set of life events would be the series of friendships that I made that uh, led me to the division and then has kept me here for is that 20 plus years or some embarrassing number. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes it harder to lie about my age, but it's a long time. <laughs> you can always lie about your age, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say, it will be believable. Yeah. Uh, wow, <laughs> incredible how um, it seems like you both found the path uh, that that led you to where you are. It, it was it was it was always meant to be. Um, you know, one question that I was uh, I frequently confronted with is. Um, if you were to turn back time, what would you tell yourself to do differently? And, and, and then a lot of times I feel like I should just go back and tell myself, you're doing the right thing. You did the right thing, you know, but it's not always like that. So, so <laughs> I was wondering, what advice would you guys give the younger you? If you, were to, if you were able to go back in time, what would you tell yourself at a younger age? And Kim, I'm going to start with you. Uh, boy, this is so trite, but... Uh... I'm a sweater of the small stuff. So it would be, and I would tell this to my <laughs> real time same self right now, but uh, I <laughs> spent so much time sweating stuff and appreciating, right? Don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. Like uh, I would, uh, I've always followed my nose, but I've also, also felt really guilty about not having a really deliberate plan. <laughs> And uh, and things obviously worked out, and I feel really fulfilled, and I uh, love every part of what I'm doing now. So I would say, like, man, cut yourself some slack and just say yes when you want to and follow your nose in all the ways that you do, and you're going to get there. Cool. Follow your nose. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, how about you? What would you tell the younger Teresa? <laughs> 
I think it's something that I actually say, well, I do remind myself of as well today, but also say sometimes with um, people that I work with, which is that, um, you know, one, not every, not one person can satisfy everything in your life, you know, so it's good to look for multiple mentors and supporters in your life. And that includes yourself sometimes while you should be truthful to who you are that sometimes you're wrong too <laughs> and you need to you know check it out with other people but but it's not because you're a failure but because we all need multiple areas of support and it's important to be able to find those and to know you know sometimes the person to seek certain advice from is 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 maybe very selective you know so you don't always go to your partner or your parent or your sibling for things um, because they're not necessarily the best in certain situations. And I guess related to that too is that, you know, we all create our own set of internal kind of rules for living. And, um, and you know, some of us who tend to sweat the small things or tend to be a little controlling, you know, might have a pretty strict set of rules for a lot of things, but that other, Oh, we, we lost. <laughs> and so you. to be angry at them for not following your probably the best word. <laughs> what? So, so I, I, and that last one was probably the gem. That? It was right there. Yeah, Teresa, we lost you for for a few seconds. <laughs> Can you say that last thing again? All right. I was about the rules. Did you hear that part? <laughs> that, that, that. No, that was so I was part. saying that you know. I, I think that, you know, we all create our own sort of internal set of rules and, um, and you know, particularly whenever you're, you know, tend to be a little controlling or whatever, they might be very specific rules for very specific things. But I think it's always important to remember that your set of rules are not other people's set of rules. And so our tendency to get upset when people don't follow our rules when they are not aware of them <laughs> is, you know... A, a, causes lots of heartache, I think, and mm. a lot of stress uh, interpersonally. And that is, I think, something I wish I really did understand a lot better when I was younger. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we heard that again. Because we, <laughs> I know, we that. That's, <laughs> that's legit good. Um, yeah. I, have, I have another question for you guys. What words or phrases do you use a lot? <clears throat> I know I spend a lot of time around you, Teresa, and I know that we tend to use certain words a lot, especially in New York. And it's okay because I learned how to how to bleep things out of that video, so feel free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if there are words that you use that wouldn't be appropriate for an, a you know a younger audience. <laughs> well, I don't know how many of you I don't know how many of you watch inside the actor's studio, but there's always a questionnaire they do at the end, and they always ask the actor what their favorite curse word is and I would say 90% of the time it is of course what my favorite curse word is and probably my favorite word on the planet <laughs> <laughs> for so many reasons but I won't say it I think you all know what it is um, so that I definitely overuse <laughs> but it's just fun to say um, <laughs> I think that I uh, have a, t I think I have a tendency to have little phrases that I use that are might be sort of faddish. So I certainly was a big proponent of awesome for a long time and super and you know um, I like to do those things to use those words a lot. I like to say um, I know right. <laughs> that's that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> Yes, you do. Uh, do right? You do say that. <laughs> no, no insurance. <laughs> insurance. Funny. We should. We should. So be able those. To, uh, uh, yeah. Mm, we should be able to to figure out. You know, tell each other what the words we use the most. Uh, you know, a lot of because now when you say I know, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. You do say that. I hear you say that a lot. Uh, when I started making videos, I see. <laughs> and I then your and then your response is supposed to be. Right? Right? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's how it goes. <laughs> or maybe goes. something like something more logical, like if you already know, why am I telling you this? Right? <laughs> no, that's too logical. Exactly. No, no, no. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Well, that's really kind of 
ending many questions with right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is so funny. I one time had students who kept a tally during a lecture of the number of times that I used the name, the word right. And it was like, literally like <laughs> front and back, like all cross hatched, oh. like it's 217 <laughs> times in three hours. So <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> so that's a data driven response. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's like, a, that's empirically supported. That, that's legit. And mine, I would say is right now, love it. That's uh, become like yeah, so good. problematic for me because people are like, you can't really love that much stuff, but I love it. And I, <laughs> yeah, it's a huge problem. Love so it. Love I think it supports your enthusiasm for things. Yeah, there you go, right? Like go big or go home. That's it, spread the love. That's great, I love That's it. Right. That's right, that's right. Now guys, there are times when we all feel uh, you know, inadequate, we feel like we don't have what it takes, um, we question our decisions, um, and those are the times when we actually need the support the most, but we also need to know what to tell ourselves to get out of that funk. Is there something that you, um, you want to share with us that you say to yourself when you find yourself in doubt? Um, Kim, I'm going to start with you. So... It should be some kind of self-talk about being a warrior. And uh, and I mean this totally legit and it will sound like the most completely moronic thing. And, uh, and again, it should be like, you're a warrior, you've got this. And mine is not even joking, that song, one foot in front of the other. Literally, it's that song that gets me like out of bed in the morning on a day when I know that I have a lot of dreadful things. It gets me out onto the stage if I have to do some kind of a dress and I'm really nervous about it. It's and is that like Mary Poppins or uh, Snow White? I mean, it's seriously like the worst possible uh, earworm to have as a motivational tool, but it works. Yeah, it works. I don't think there is a, a, yeah. a hierarchy of, you know, motivational tools that we use. <laughs> it's what works. Yeah. And Disney, I'm sure, is on the list somewhere. One foot in front of the other. That's it. Therese, how about you? Well, of course, Disney was everything to me. And if you <laughs> note, most Disney characters I know. don't have... Have mothers who die very exactly. it's before this oh. or, or in the process. So, um, yes, it is a motivating factor many <laughs> times. Um, I, I mean, I think that mine is really what we all say to people we work with too, which is this will pass. You know, this this will pass. Um, it's really hard right now. You know, turn to the things that work, and <clears throat> sometimes that's just taking a break and vegging out and sometimes that's you know calling calling a friend and uh you know um so it's really just kind of reminding that it's it's not it's not an inter you know it's not an uh eternal process here it's going to pass at some point um yeah and friends are good for that <laughs> great um i have a last question for you guys what book would you tell everyone to read Therese, you should go first because you'll have a legit answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, I mean, honestly, this this is a question that I have had an answer to. I think since I was in high school, and I still, and I and and one that um, I think it was two two or three summers ago decided I needed to read both of these books again because I kept having it as my go to answer very sincerely, and that is Brave New World in 1984. And I say both of those because they were um, uh, mind-boggling and eye-opening for me when I read them at 16, 17, and, um, and I just feel that they are more prophetic every day. <laughs> and, um, 
I feel like we have more and more of the tools to make that a reality every day. And I think it's important for people to think about the messages in terms of our own independence and freedoms and, um, and not particularly with relation to Brave World, not just going into a Soma state of being and check out, but to really be active advocates of our lives and the lives of others. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's really good. It's, a, it's always like uh, when you read something, you think it's so utopian or in this case dystopian and you think it's never going to happen. And, <laughs> and it's good to have a reality check and see how easily things can just turn around and um, yeah, you know, and life can change. Yeah, like Handmaid's Tale, right? <laughs> like that was supposed to be fiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Kim. So I have... <laughs> <laughs> should be a better answer. I have a little bit of ADHD with books. So, uh, and a uh, rabid listener. So my favorite thing is now like uh, audiobooks, like nonstop. So, because I never can sit still long enough to read a book. But uh, I, if the question was, what's your favorite movie? It's What's Eating Gilbert Grape. And... Uh, if you see that movie right. and it resonates for you, like you totally get it. But for books, uh, every like post-apocalyptic fiction has been my favorite. And uh, I was trying to think with this question about something that I like really devoured and that stuck with me. And there's a really good book that I read just recently. So it's not even like a, a long time favorite, but uh, it's, Frederick Bachman, and the book is, my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. And if you have not read it, it's fantastic. He wrote The Man Called Ove and um, Bear Town. And, uh, uh, oh shoot, what was the other one? Anyway, and another one. And it's just this totally perfect collection of people who are impossibly quirky and it celebrates how quirky they are and it's just the perfect uh really like this reminder to celebrate all things that are out of the box and that make people totally out there it's it's really fabulous yeah celebrating things that are out of the box is so critical and then you got to think about well what's out of the box nowadays we don't know what's in the box what's out of the box anymore. it's yeah. just a big big mess <laughs> but it sounds yeah. like a, like like a fun book and yeah it, it would probably be an incredible movie too if it were made into a movie already yeah, yeah. oh my god it's so good <laughs> you guys you will love it you will totally love it okay on my this, list this is awesome. I am so happy that we were able to connect and get you to uh, tell us a little bit more about um, you beyond the professional uh, selves that we know uh, already and how, how great you are as people as well as as professionals. Um, I'm always humbled uh, to be around both of you and I'm very happy that we got a chance to uh, share this conversation with the rest of our community. Uh, so uh, you know, I love the idea. Very much asking us and yeah. letting us do it together. So yeah, fun. so you guys had fun, right? So, so fun. you you wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. You, you would this encourage is fun. other I members to do it. Do it, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Love awesome. it, right? Right. So, <laughs> I'm gonna count. I'm gonna go back and count all the rights we said in this in this video. Um, There's a lot. There's a lot so, for sure, right? <laughs> Well, thank you so much again, and uh, okay. uh, to the rest of our uh, division members, enjoy this video because next time the spotlight may be on you. Yeah. On you. <laughs> Thanks. See you. Bye, Bye. team. Bye. <laughs> Bye.